What, what originally got you uh, interested in computer science and computer engineering? Um, I, I think since I was in high school, I was already interested in computing. Mm -hmm. And so I did my undergraduate in computer engineering, and I got to have more interest in how computers can solve problems for, for the society, for uh, different kinds of career. And so I, I did a lot of work first in the um, artificial intelligence and then machine learning, and then I got into the area of uh, internet searching, web mining, those areas. So I, I've been working on this for, for many years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's you know, something that always interested me, and I'm, right, I'm really right. excited to... And you love computing since you were high school too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. They, okay. you know, they just offer a couple basic courses there, but... Right, right. Um, do you have a chance to do programming when you were in high school? What? Do you have a chance to do programming? Yeah, I had, they, were, they have uh, two intro courses, one on C++ and one on Java. Good, so, so you did in high school I already? I did, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did you like it? I do. I, yeah. It's uh, some people hate programming, but it, if you like it, it's really good. Yeah, it takes a lot of uh, it takes a lot of patience and it does, and, it and, does. Uh, yeah. But um, I mean, I haven't done anything too advanced yet. So yeah, that's but, it. You will find it very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I, well, one of the things that interests me is uh, is human computer interaction. Okay. That, that I like. So that's mm -hmm. one. That's one of the things maybe I'll be interested in. But what uh, what interest what originally got you interested in web search and mining? Particularly. Okay. Well, that is probably just the timing. This, uh, when I was in my uh, in graduate school, that was just the beginning of the web, the web Wild web standard. Mm -hmm. So it was early nineties, and so it was just the timing that the web was coming out. People were starting to develop yeah, web browsers, and then people started to create web pages. So that's how I, I get into the area. So it was just a good timing that I, I like to do. Um, uh, machine learning, uh, as you knew how to see information which people can help you to find, write documents and mm -hmm. supporting the information needs and so on. And so it was just the right timing that uh, the web was developed uh, in the, when I was in graduate school. So I was pretty much one of the first few people who developed search engines, even before Yahoo, Google, anything like that. Really? So, was it uh, just like a local search engine kind of thing? It, it, was a, it was an internet search engine, so you search through the whole internet. But at that time, you have to see that there may be only a few thousands or tens of thousands mm -hmm. of web pages, but you were one of the uh, first ones. So our papers were actually published in 94, 95, something like that. Yeah. And wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah cool. so that, that's how I get into web searching. But I was also interested not in just searching documents, but then how can we extract knowledge from the information on the web, so that's how we get into web mining, and then we start to apply it in areas like security and healthcare now. So most of my work are now uh, related to healthcare and searching information, extracting knowledge, not only from the web but also from social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, could you give me an example of something like you tried to like ex extract now? Yeah, uh, some of our work, my students are working with me now. Is like, for example, if you see a lot of people uh, who are health consumers or who are, are caregivers. So they may be taking medication. So they may be discussing about the medication, what experience they have, how effective they are, and also whether they are side effects or things like that. Mm -hmm. So one of the work we do is that try to detect whether they are side effects on certain uh, drugs. So we can identify how strong the signal of a adverse drug reaction so that uh, we can uh, report to FDA or we can alert the users that this is a drug you're taking, most people experiencing this side effect, so if you're experiencing it, that may be the reason, and if they want to have an alternative, there could be other drugs for the same use, for the same disease, but may not have that strong signals of side effects, mm -hmm. so they give people what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um. I like this. I like this one. What do you do for res for your research on a day to day basis? What do I do? You mean the you mean the topic or what actually activity I'm doing? Yeah, what what you typically you're doing for your, I don't know if that's it. If that question doesn't make sense, I can move. Okay. Um if you're asking the topic, those are some of the topics I'm yeah, doing. No, I, but I, if you're talking about what do I do, the activities I'm doing every day, I spend a lot of time um uh either uh Developing new algorithms, developing uh, new ideas. I have to read a lot of literature from what other people are doing mm -hmm. so that I can compare my work with the other ones. And then I have to uh, develop new algorithms, new techniques, and then I have to work with the students to run experiments to see how whether they perform and, and whether it's performing better than some of the existing mm -hmm. ones or whether it's solving a new problem. Like and so that 
did a lot of um, uh, sitting in front of the computer, developing algorithm, running experiments. And also as the faculty, we also have a lot of uh, classes and also administrative duties. So we have meetings spread out all the days too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. either meeting or come back to the office and do my research. Mm -hmm. like yeah. And uh, how, how do you, um, how, what is it like graduate students? I'm sorry, I'm not too familiar. How, like the people over there that are helping you out, how, how exactly do they like contribute to your research? You know? uh, we, we will have weekly meetings. Sometimes mm -hmm. we will more often, so when we can we can look at the progress on uh, how the algorithm is developing and also uh, how the experiment is running. Look at the result. We will discuss about uh, what what do we observe in the result and what findings do we have and how maybe we can even enhance better in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. and so, we, so we we have a lot of research meetings. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Uh, what wh what led you to from Arizona to Drexel? Oh, um, it's just well, from Arizona, I actually spent some time in Hong Kong as a faculty. After after Arizona. After Arizona, I graduated and I worked and I also went to Hong Kong as a faculty for a number of years, and then I came back to U.S. in Drexel here. So mostly it's just the position that brought me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you like it? I like, I like Dressel. Dressel is very dynamic. Things are changing very fast. You look at the campus, it changes every year. Oh my god, it's yeah. like chronic reconstruction. Right. <laughs> and so we, we are moving very fast, and the students are very smart, very active. They also do a lot of co op, so they also make the experience with the co op and, mm -hmm. the, and, the, and the teaching here. So we, we train the students not only just theoretically, but also very practically, so, mm -hmm. yeah, which is good. Um. All right, I think, um, all right. what are some of the biggest changes in uh, in your specific area of the field? I mean, obviously, it's huge, but like, mm -hmm. what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in your time, and what do you see as like possible, something groundbreaking in the future? Uh, what do I see? Um, I think most of my work are now using the social media data for healthcare applications. I believe social media is still kind of a new source of data for healthcare mm -hmm. area because in the healthcare area, people use the traditional data source when it comes to like uh, electronic health records and clinical studies and also the uh, maybe pharmaceutical database. Those are all data submitted by, uh, provided by the health professional. Mm -hmm. But social media data is the data contributed by the health consumer directly, which is the first hand experience of all the patient, health consumer, and caregivers. So this is a very different data source from all the traditional data source that the healthcare is using. So we see that there's a lot of work that we can do on the social media data, extracting the knowledge and supporting and supplementing uh, all the other work that healthcare has done. And social media is also a very good platform for healthcare intervention because a lot of people are not using social media, and which is also a good channel for us to reaching out to the health consumer, to the patient, and doing intervention. That would be more changing, although it's still kind of pushing it over. I hope that there will be uh, more work that can be using the social media data or even using the social media platform for helping mm. applications. Yeah, that's just data yeah, you didn't have before. Right. And also, if you have the mobile phone now, you can also collect a lot of health data because you can. Mm. I, see with the, I see that with the. I see that with the. I saw that in the. Um, in the Apple presentation where right. they where they had the, uh, the, the Apple heart, Watch. heart rate monitor yes. and they had um I think there was one app they showed which um was like they were doing tests on the watch. I don't right. know if you right. Yeah, so you can collect a lot more healthcare data continuously, not just only when you go to the clinics and do the lab, do the health medical test. Mm -hmm. So you can collect a lot of data which is very useful for monitoring the or tracking the health health conditions. Yeah, there's so much more data out there but you have to kind of organize right. exactly. and something Data and doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I find that really interesting. But uh, um, okay, I think um, I think two more. Okay. Um, what what do you think is a, a good way to become a a better computer scientist or a better programmer? What's it? 
It's kind uh, of a broad question. Yeah, but... it's, it's a good question. It's a very good question. How do you make it to be a better computer scientist? I would say um, uh, you got to be open-minded. Don't just restrict yourself to a, a box. This is only what I do. This is what I want to see. And this is only the theory I'm mm-hmm. interested about. So you want to be more open-minded. Look at how the world, the society is changing. There are always needs and applications that we may not think of in the past. Mm-hmm. And also, computing is very powerful in terms of uh, how fast you run the processing and also how fast learning the pattern of things happening in the modern world. So there are also many applications that we may not have thought about because we, the human behavior is changing. Mm-hmm. The needs of the human society can also be changing. And the way human communicate can also be changed in the past, like five years, ten years ago, we don't have social media now. Mm-hmm. Social media becomes a major channel that people make connection to one another and stay in touch with one another. In the future, there could be even more, there could be a lot more sense of data, and the way we communicate mm-hmm. could also be changed. So, computer science, in some way, it could be very theoretical, just understanding the nature uh, or the, or the theory, mathematics. Mm-hmm. But if you do apply some of this, uh, theory into the practical application, it can also solve a lot of problems that we may not know. And also, the business model could be changing just because of the computing technology. Too. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot more opportunities we should, we should open up our mind to look at the, the way it's changing and what we need from the computer. Mm-hmm. I know it's tough for a lot of people to move. Like, a lot of people have so much legacy code and that kind of stuff right. that it's tough to move into yeah, people mm-hmm. like to stay in the comfort zone. Yeah, this exactly. Is what I'm exactly. Good at. This I know, is what so I know do. exactly what you're right. talking about. But you have to look ahead. Like years later, our world could be very different from what we are mm-hmm. now. And what are the new technologies that can change? So we have to keep open mind. Mm-hmm. That's a great answer, actually. I really like yeah. that. But um, and then my last question, just a basic one: uh, What classes do you teach, and what's um, what's one thing you try to pass down to your students? Uh, what are the a few of the courses I usually teach are here is the senior design function, which is a series of uh, mm-hmm. three courses from uh, fall to spring for the senior year students. So senior students need to uh, group together in a group of about four to five students and working on a senior design function. Usually is a system analysis and development function. So usually when I teach this course, I will have to review the materials about doing information system analysis and design, and then try to ask them to think of an innovative way uh, develop a system that uh, you have not have not been done before, and try to create new features, new functions that can solve problems that may not have been solved before, and try to also differentiate your product from some of the existing ones. If they are something similar, how is your product better than the other one? Uh, how can you create competitive advantage from them? Mm-hmm. So those are that's one of the courses I'm teaching. I'm having students understand uh, computing is not just programming or 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 just a computer architecture or those kind of things. You can you can use computing to develop a lot of new things, make it innovative and solving new problems that probably you have not thought about. Mm-hmm. So try to be innovative in that way. And other courses I'm teaching are mostly PhD courses. Those are some required courses. Students, so some of them are uh, statistical analysis, some of them are like, social network analysis. So basically, it helps students understand uh, what data is and how can you do they use data analytics to identify new patterns and solve new, new problems. Mm-hmm. So those are the uh, courses I used to teach. The most thing I have students to to also again, think outside the box, right? Mm-hmm. Think about that's a problems. huge point. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's pretty good. Thank you. If you have anything to follow up, you can email me anytime. No, right?